Hello everyone, welcome back to the part of Half Rank Gaming's Balan's Wonderworld. This very possibly might end up being the last part of the series because there really isn't that much left to do. I just need to get my remaining stamps, which I've already done all the bosses, I've already done all the Act 3, so I just have to basically do some cleanup with the Acts 1 and 2, which is basically just going to be Balan Glides. And then I'm going to have to get the tower maxed out, which is mostly going to be an off-screen affair anyway, just because it's really slow. I don't think any of you want to see that. Load. Please load. That'd be good, I promise. Okay, here we go. I don't really care what the other suits are. Actually, no, that's a lie. I do. But, uh. I know exactly what I'm getting for my suits. Suit 1, Balan, no kidding. Suit 2 is you, suit 3 is you. The reason for that is when I inevitably want to start grinding out my, uh. my droplets to make things go along just a little bit faster. Those are the suits I'm gonna want to have on hand. Uh oh, that's the boss arena, and I don't want to trigger it. Okay. That's the end. Alright. And that's basically gonna be what I'm doing this entire video. What's left on four? I had two triggered already. What? Am I not on hard mode anymore? Okay, what happened? Let me go double check something. Was I stupid in the last part? The seven was the last boss I fought. Yup. Gosh darn it. I'm off screening that. 8 2. Oh, maybe. I don't know. <sighs> Alright, I'm gonna go rematch these. First off, I'm gonna get my hard mode back, and then I'm gonna rematch any of these fights that weren't on hard mode. Was apparently a good number of them. I basically did these in. Okay, so it's 8 and 7 I have to redo. Like, I'll mention if anything looks different. Like, they almost never did. This is the kicker. It's like, they were basically always the same. Like, the only one that I noticed was even the smallest. In Actually, what am I doing? I should... No, get out of here. I made a mistake. You go back. <laughs> go to 3-3. Three, three. That's the level to go to to get hard mode. I I've come to realize this. I'm just so used to defaulting to 6-2, but no. It takes way longer here. Get out of here. Like, I would check what I do, but like, you already know. Like, literally all I do is just go into the area with the kid thing, because there's enemies galore in there. Hmm. Oh, I just realized I'm gonna have to rematch four boss again too. Oh, I really screwed up. Okay, well, make that three fights I'm gonna have to redo. Ugh. Although to be fair, at least with uh, four, I actually don't have to do that one on hard mode if I don't want to. I can do that on normal. I just need the reset. All right, well. Is this the room? I think it is. Okay. I get to see the process again. You know, I have the last chance I have to show it off, so... That's my rationale, anyway. The suit's available here. Ah, usually the enemies just pop out right away, maybe. It's because the suit's here. Because again, like, usually it's not. Yeah, okay. Here they are. And I can just snipe them all. It's great. I love it. Oh, actually, yeah, no. I think it just gets the reset the wall. 194. Which honestly isn't that bad even on its own, but... Oh, it's so much better when I... Yeah, okay. 
Anyway, I'll be back. I need to go rematch those bosses and the like and get my hard mode, etc, etc. I just finished up the chapter 8 boss. I figured out what did it. So, there, after the first hit, there is the phase that freezes you. So I assumed that because I kept my costume, that didn't count as a hit. I was wrong. It counts. Thankfully there is a suit that's immune to ice, although the in-game description does not tell you this. So, I actually had to look it up online to figure out which one it was. It's the Frost Giant that is immune to ice. Which, to be fair, is one of them that's available in the fight. So, like, I'll still give him credit for that one. And then seven was the other one I had to do, so I'm gonna go do that one real quick. And I've already redone four, so yeah, like everything's covered to be redone. See y'all in a moment. Yeah, this one actually took me a few attempts. Not necessarily because it was hard or anything, it's just I kept making really stupid mistakes. Like, using the bull charge to go straight into the fist. Which usually destroys it, but not always. So yeah, anyway, I, I can assure you like that they're the same fight in hard mode. Literally the same fight. Maybe there's something like an eight, the spin cycle for that is like slightly faster. It would be something really minute that would be really easy to miss. Nothing that's really worth writing home about. All right, I'm gonna go do this again. I'm not gonna show you it again because it's literally the same thing again. So I will see you all in a moment. Okay, you see the red thumbs up up there? Uh, I did it. I literally did the exact same thing that you saw me do before. Alright, let's go blitz through the rest of these. And of course I go to what's easily the most complicated stage I have left. At least to Act 1. Act 2 is an open room. Like the most complex thing I have to do for Act 2 is just flip the room. Let me skip. Okay. Like, I can still do- like, this is easy, like, the scariest one to do with Balan, just because there's fan blades everywhere. Might as well grab a few droplets. Oh, I should have... yeah, okay, fair. Yeah, I need one of these. So I can open the door. I'll grab that little gimmick. Wait. Right, yeah. I feel like I've been to these stages enough times now. Okay, go in there again. And flip. Right here. That's one, that's two. Okay. Open up. And flip again. Oh, yeah, the right checkpoint. Uh. Oh, saw blade. Came dangerously close to that one without even knowing. Uh. Stay here. One. Then you have to go up next to it. That's eh, nerve wracking. Okay. Which is like, like I cannot take damage. If I do, I am kicked out of hard mode. I'm back in silly baby coward normal mode. There's an egg here that I want. Like, eggs are so trivial at this point, they mean nothing. Like, I have over 200 of the Tim's back at the home base, but gosh darn it, I need them all. It's more interesting to cap out at around 250 anyway. Maybe a little more, but it's around that number. Yeah, and I'm at 227. 228 if you include the egg. Interestingly enough, that number is going down. I wonder if it goes down because of the traps. Like, I've been wondering that for a while, but I never actually stopped to 
to test that theory. It's something that would make sense. Alright, this one should be a bit easier, although it's also a lot easier to lose Valen. Wait, I just need to find a mirror and then leave. That's a mirror, but it's not the mirror I'm looking for. Uh, there's a mirror over here, and that is the mirror I'm looking for, as it so happens. In I go. Flip. Take these. And there's the end of the level. That's a little more on brain for what I expect. None of that act one nonsense where I actually have to play the level mostly legitimately. Like, that's silly talk. Playing levels developer intent. Now that's nah. Not here. So I just have to do act two. Act one was already finished. That's convenient for me. Alright. And come on, load. Okay. Up and up, up, up. Up. Hi, Balan. Oh, this is the arena. I didn't actually remember that. Oh, well. It's not like rules meant anything to me anyway. Wait, did I just go a full circle, just up a little bit? I think I did. Oh well, too late to worry about that now! Well, Alright, that's another one done. Nine's already done, so next is three. And I gotta do them both, so... I'll do two first, because it'll be the easier. I can literally just go up in this stage. Not a concern of mine. Up, 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 up. Wait, there's the ending. This is beautiful, like, truly phenomenal gameplay, I know. Now I gotta go back to three again because I didn't do it max one either. Wait. This is so riveting. So I'm a little disappointed I'm not running into more eggs, but at the same time, like I, I completely understand. Like the eggs are there. I'm just skipping all of them. Intentional or otherwise. I think this is teardrop. Or droplet. Uh, I don't know. I keep calling them teardrops because it's the shape, but. I don't necessarily know if that's what it's supposed to be. Anyway, there's the end of that level. Alright. Chapter 3 is done. Keep going in that circle. Next is going to be eight. And after that, uh, okay, no, it's just eight and seven again. So eight and seven always been the last, and I need to do them both. So start with one this time. I'll do them in order. I fear two is probably going to be a gliding simulator. Kind of like how three is. One m might start as one, but it's not going to stay that way. Yeah, no, it is. Welcome to the gliding simulator. Although, yeah, no. The ending's over here. Just gotta get to the end.
I'm gonna save. Go back to eight. Is over here. Hey. And then I can go through the proper gliding simulator. Oh, okay. Really, the gliding simulator is three. Like, you know this if you saw the video where I got the red thumbs up in all of the act threes. Or even just the one where I was getting all of the colored drones. So like, yeah, it's, it's just hey. gliding. Alright. Following the path. It looks like it goes down here, then it goes down. It's this way. Oh, there's the end of it. Okay, this actually isn't that long. I guess I was just scared of it because Act uh, 3 is really long. Right, down we go. I see if an egg goes around any of those, but I didn't see one if it's there. Which is fine, I just. Let's see one. Okay. All I have left is seven, which I don't know if I need to do both acts or if I just need to do one of them. Oh, great. Seven's over here. I have to do them both. Alright, I'll do two first because seven one is just open air. That's going to take no time at all. That, that one's not even like up for debate of whether or not it'll be an issue. It will not. How did I not trigger this one? I came here after I started doing hard mode stuff. Huh, I don't know. Oh, whatever. I guess this is the next most strong field one that I just didn't worry about. At any rate. Right over here. No, just fanatic. Now these. So the end level should start here. I'm not even gonna bother with the mini boss, there's no point. And fall! Wait! Give me my red thumb. Nice. So just one more stage to go for the red marks. It's 7 Act 1, which like I said is an open air stage, so it's not even going to be remotely challenging to do. Unless I'm missing the stage, I'll double check that after this. I'm pretty sure I'm not. Skip the this, okay. On Act 3, it's right here, but... This, this is the wrong tower. That's the right tower in Act 1. Okay. Here we go. Okay, just gonna skim around and make sure that there's red thumbs on all these. Uh, yeah, that's all of them. They all have red thumbs, and I know I did the Act threes a long time ago. I would have noticed if any of those were yellow by now. Yeah, they're all red, too. Okay. Catch this egg that I've just been sitting on for who knows how long. And I'm gonna start feeding my poor starved Tims. Come on, start eating, come on. Anybody else wanna grow up? Anybody else? 
This place I still feed them over here right now. Usually I'm swimming in these guys when I start trying to feed them. Oh, well, there's one that finally grew up. Oh, I can't make them uh, make that one that eating or dancing as it so happens. There you go. Okay. Hatch the egg! Ah, now we're trying to do. Uh, Alright. Oh, there's another big one now. Oh, and there's another one now. They just keep coming. Uh, did I not activate that egg? I thought I ran close enough to it. Well, I definitely did that time! Just have to swing 80. And I guess I can drop off like my 62 over here. Honestly, the others are so significant. Oh no, I chose so much that word. The other. They're so minor, they're not gonna change anything. Alright, everyone, get on the ride! It's basically all that's left now. Actually, no, not even basically. All that is left is getting this power to play. I might end up doing like a sub objective of getting up to the maximum number of the uh, Tims, which. See, the 250, 255, like if I get 256, like, it's in that range. I don't know if it's a soft or hard cap, but there is a cap there. I'm just going to keep going, and I'm going to pause the recording because there is a... Uh, there's nothing left. It's just sit here and wait, so I will see y'all in a moment. Okay, I am back several hours later. It's almost been an all-nighter just for this. Oh, I got two achievements. TikTok and a theater off the beaten something. Ellipses. Probably off the beam path. So, uh, it, it turned white. Also, oh wow, the counter's going way faster than it has been this entire time, and I'm not even doing anything. <laughs> yeah, we just upgraded the hands. It looks nice! Shame I'm probably never gonna look at it again because I'm done with the game now. Yeah, like the counter is gone now. Wait, it's gone here and the HUD element is gone too. So there's just like no purpose to it anymore. Okay, well, since the game is technically finished now, I'm willing to say that they took each challenge as much success and, I, well, aside from that one. Part, in part 29, which I put a thing in the description, like, if you consider that part to nullify the challenge, I don't blame you, because that one kind of did cut it close. Hey. But either way, giving actual proper thoughts, if you couldn't already kind of tell from me, okay. easily the game that I feel like I cheated the most with this series, uh, because I was... Which is, well, I was cheating it, because Steam doesn't let you replay games with achievements on. So I had to make a decision, and I decided that I would go through it and just assume that I would hate like everyone else. And actually, like, it's definitely not, like, some 10 out of 10 masterpiece, but I didn't really go into it expecting that. <laughs> Like, it's a Square Enix game, for crying out loud. They, they aren't exactly known for their platformers. 
Make sure you do not get involved in the his influence is very apparent in this game. Like, even here with the Tims, these are blatantly just, like, reformed child. Like, whether or not I would say it's an improvement or a step backwards, I honestly don't know. Like, it's definitely simpler, which kind of just goes back, like, what's easily the biggest flaw this game has, which is... Everything in it is way more simple than it has any right to be. And honestly, like, every single real complaint I come up with in this game just boils down to it's too simple. Like, as an example, there are six, count them six, buttons on the controller that you press to jump. All four face buttons as well as both of the triggers. That's ridiculous. And mind you, too, like, it, it's not an issue on s some suits, but there's a large number of suits that you do not have the ability to jump. They could have very easily resolved this by just allowing, like, the bottom face button is jump and then setting the other three is actions because like I do know that 80 suits is a lot so I don't really give them too much grief over some of the suits being a bit weird uh, while I am thinking about some of the suits too like another thing like for literally every suit that has the will randomly trigger after a while that, again, could have been very easily fixed by just binding it to another button. Like, if they, if they had any of those binded to, like, one of the triggers, then boom. Literally every issue solved. Like, if that's how it works, like, Foxbox would have gone from a lack of stock to, like, genuinely, like, one of the top three abilities in the game with pursuits. Because the box itself is invincible, so if you had the ability to just trigger it at will, but it would be an unstoppable monster. But alas, you can't control it, and you just have to deal with the fact that you randomly freeze in place, and that's not even the only costume that does that. There's the invisibility suit that only triggers invisibility sometimes. There's the cheetah suit that just speeds up sometimes. And again, like, all of it just boils down to the fact that the game had a very clear set of being designed as simple, which I can only assume is some kind of foregone philosophy of following Mario design philosophies a little too closely. Like, they saw that everybody talks about how great Mario games are because of how simple they are. Okay, let's go as simple as possible. But they went way too far in it, and it doesn't even just spoil down to, like the suits. There's the things too, like other than part 29, I think the next part where I was the closest to breaking this challenge is back when I had uh, gotten all of the statues, and I found out that there was proper English dub for the, the game's songs, and they don't play. Even though it's in English, they're all in the game. And it doesn't play. It's a bonus unlockable. You don't know why that is? It's because they had to simplify everything down to just be one way. Why? Then, like, even that simplicity thing, like, it's not a universal thing. Like, you want one thing, like, literally the one thing in this game that wasn't stupidly simple. This thing, right here. The balance suit. Now I'm locking it. Which I don't think would have been that big of an issue if communication on how you actually trigger it was done a little better. Like, if you remember, like, back when you start the game, this is a stone statue that has a little bit of a gauge that goes up whenever you give it rainbow droplets, and I think that part is fine. Like, I really don't think they needed to adjust that at all because you can just see the bar go up. There's no issue with that. 
the issue comes in when you have to do the basically Tim breeding where you get two of them together, but you need to have two of them have three of those metals on them. Chuck one of the small ones at one of the big ones that also has the, the three metals. And then you have to hope that you get one with the crown and just save scum over and over if you don't, because it's not exactly the most common thing. And then you have other things too, like you have the bound bouts, which is literally just quick time events. Like, I got better at them as I went along, but that doesn't mean I ever necessarily loved them. Right, and what's especially kind of disappointing about those is, like, I'm not going to act like they would have been great if they had done this, but they could have at least been made better if they had just put in some very basic button and puts the hit, like, a proper QTE instead of the shadow overlay. Like, you could have had, like, maybe one shadow overlay per bound bout or every other bound bout, but it should not have been for every single one of them. They... Like, they could have had some, like, maybe, like, spin the analog stick around for one of them, or lean it forward, back, and, or maybe, like, you hit a specific button, again, like, a proper QTE. And part of the reason I think that is because, like, a lot of them have the button masher ones, which are easily the most enjoyable out of any of those, just because they're basically freebies. They're impossible to lose, because they're a lot more lenient. There's like with literally any of those other ones, like you have to know they're pumping, otherwise you're going to fail. And if you do fail, there's another problem I have with the game. The only way you have to try it again is if you go and fight the boss, win, and come back. And then you get one more attempt, and if you screw up, you have to go fight the boss and win again. Mind you, like this also applies to the sports, although because the sports don't actually require you to win, they only really give you a teardrop reward. I don't think that's as big of an issue. The bound bout bouts are tied to statues, so that, that one's an actual completion criteria issue. And then there is one other thing which I did mention this for time too, which is like the game is really restrictive early on and it I think like, it genuinely gets really like, it's at its most fun in post-game. I think a lot of it is because, like, once you get the balancer, you can just fly around wherever and just... Well, I wanted to say go in a place that the developers never intended, but that's not really true. Because they clearly did intend you going there. Like, they put droplets out in random places. Like, they knew you could go out there. I think, like, Chapter 6 is a good example of that. You can just fly out in the ether and you just see stuff. Which I think is really neat. Like, I, I don't really have a retort on that one. My issue is that it takes so long to get that level of enjoyment or really anything closer, because what you're going to be dealing with in the main game is being really slow and not really having much in terms of a Musa. Like, if you fall back, like, here, I'm just going to pick a random stage, like, into, like, say, like, 6 3 as an example. I'm not really planning on going too far in it, I just want to look at the suits. Because if you look at the suits, like, ignoring these bottom ones, like, these are the ones we started with. Mind you, couldn't even get all these, like, you couldn't get this one right away, so. You had Spin Jump, Slight Hover, Tall, and Fire Breath, and Ground Pound. None of which are really all that noteworthy. And they all become laughably obsolete. And again, like because of issues that's great before, like for example, this one, this suit can't jump. It can only breathe fire. Or how this one here technically can't jump either. It can just stretch up in the air, which is completely redundant because the stretching height is around the same as the standard jump without any of these other suits. Area 2, I would argue, has it even worse. Because you only, like, you have these two suits, which as far as World 2 is concerned, the Dolphin is an objectively better version of the Jelly Jolt. 
Now the jolt does get some value later on with the electric attack in resistance, but as far as World 2 is concerned, it is just a straight up upgrade. Then you have stuff like the Telepotter and the Double Jumper, which are really good outside of their levels, especially the Double Jumper, but in them they really don't do anything. And the, even the Telepotter is only really good for a few Slex puzzles, which I frequently forgot its existence. And I'm sure I'm not alone in that. Chapter 3. Honestly, there's only really these three that are really all that used. Like, this one is used. This one's an optional one, just shoved away. The spider's kinda neat. This one's another one of those that just randomly turns on and off, so it has that issue. And this is a base stack which can't jump. Well, this one is honestly disappointingly underutilized. Like, I feel like more levels should have had a night theme in the early games. It's like, there's several stages that just would have been no different if it was night times. Like, why not? It could have expanded the levels a lot more vertically. It would have been better off for it. Instead, like, the only levels that are darker selectively 3 if Act 2 if you activate the switches. Uh, chapter 9. And for some reason, Chapter 11. And that's it. There is the day butterfly, but that's post game. And like I very much like post game, which is like infinitely more enjoyable than a lot, is because these last seats, which I haven't been getting into, are just massive upgrades. Like this one's just an upgrade to the cheetah, basically. Mind you, I still end up using the cheetah more, mostly because my memory's bad, but I should have been using this more because it does the same thing but better. This one is basically an upgrade to the double jumper, although I would argue the triple jumper is better, but that's. That's, Triple Jumper is also a post game one, so whatever. Well, the kid, you know how much I use this one. It's in my loadout right now. It's really good. It's great for attacks. It's good for a short, dis short range distance. It's just good. Gear King, I really wish I knew about this one earlier because it would have made a lot of puzzles a lot easier. Also, say hi to Box Fox. And the homing attack. I have to give a shift to homing attack. Like, there's the other, like, this, just the vacuum, which was just... I don't want to say the vacuum was underutilized, because there was plenty of puzzles that used it, but it felt underutilized. I feel like a lot of the suits is just low mobility, and I think that's a criticism I have on a lot of these, just because they had such bad mobility, I just never wanted to use them. Like, here's one with the... This was a good suit, but the mobility was so bad, I just never wanted to touch it. Also, high triple jumper. You got a lot of use out of you too. Moonwalker, and this applies to the Sunwalker too. Should have worked on bosses. At the very least, on many bosses. I really don't think it would have broken the game as much as the developers were scared of. Like, it would have made things so much easier. I honestly don't really have many comments on this, except for X ray ape. It should have been able to see through more than just one layer of wall. Like, I think they should have extended to like two or three, because I, I don't think you should have been able to see everything at, every time, because it would have been really overwhelming if you just started a level. But you could barely see anything. And I do think this was supposed to act as something of a radar. It certainly did for me at many points. I was like, yeah, that should have improved. Key Mouse was a great idea. Terrible execution. First off, I think this suit should have been available way earlier than Chapter 11. But even aside from that, it's just like, it needed something other than just being able to unlock things. Because literally every suit in the game has a key nearby. The If there's even a single one that doesn't, you can find a key within like 20 seconds. It's really not that big a handicap. Also, th these suits are just bad. I, I don't know if they were thinking about these. But they're just slow ascensions into the sky. Like, I can at least understand, like, maybe the appeal of Iron Apollo as a gimmick. I don't know why they made it a gimmick again. But 
just uh, again. Not as I don't have many comments on these that I haven't already mentioned on other things like the vacuum or the invisible man sound I already brought up. Dull Tiger, I think, should have had electricity when you were moving through. Or the and if I I think if this game had a functionality where it wasn't just everything tied to one button, I honestly do think that it probably would have been something like you would have had an electricity meter down in the corner and you would have hit a trigger or button or something to have electricity come out instead, which I think would have worked a lot better than just spewing electricity when you stood still. Like, that, all of that's like mostly the game's like, I can forgive some of the issues this game has. I really don't mind that there's some suits that are basically duplicates of each other because I know 80s a lot. There are plenty of parts of this game I think are genuinely fantastic. I am probably going to have earworms of this game for at least a good year or so. For the soundtrack, and this which is especially tough because like, I usually don't even like the genre music this game goes for, but this one is just... It is going to stick with me for a really long time. I know that for a fact, because I already have this issue where it just randomly pops my head. Or... Also, like, the, the cinematics, like, you can, like, they look really good. It's like one of those situations where you remember, oh yeah, Square Enix art on this. That's right. And I honestly kind of wonder, like, how much of the game's budget went into just working on those cinematics. Whether like, how much budget this game had in the first place, it was like, so... Something clearly went both very right with this game and very wrong. Like, a lot of people just tend to throw a spray next to the bus, but I honestly don't know how much fault they can take on this. Because there were some things that were, like, irrefutably Square Enix's fault. But then there's stuff like the fact that they splintered the game's plot off into a novel. I have no idea why they did this. Still. I cannot fathom it. Why would you do that? I understand that it's a 3D platformer. But we're dealing with the same guy that worked in the Sonic Adventure games. I would like to think that he's aware of the fact that 3D platformers can have stories. They don't have to be the most deep or complex, but it's okay for them to have stories. But again, that goes back to my previous criticism again of the fact that, yeah, it's way too simple. They can't, they can't have something as crazy and complex like a story, even if said story it is itself really simple. I know, also, I can show this off now. Uh, there is a soft cap of 256 for the Tims. So that was at like 260, 261, and went down. Like, I can get more hatched, like right here, and get. Uh, they'll say 257, but if I leave and come back in, they'll say 256. Because I did find that out when I was grinding. Like, as it stands overall, like. I would not be surprised at all if this ends up becoming one of those types of games where in a decade's time when the people that are complaining about this game get tired of complaining about it and move on, this game gets something of a cult classic status. Like, not a massive one. I'm talking about like the kind of thing that we see of stuff like the Dark Age Sonic games now. Like, most notably like Sonic Unleashed, where they have that are vocal critics, but most of those critics just don't care anymore. They moved on. And the people that did like this game are still liking it and are raving about it. Mind you, I would not hold my breath over a sequel. Like, we can't even- Square Enix doesn't hardly even greenlight sequels over their good games. Like, look how long it took them to get a sequel for The World Ends of the U. And, uh... Um, oh, like, look even further, how long it's gonna take them to do it again? It's not gonna happen anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, like, and that's the game, or game series at this point, that's really well received. So you can only imagine how one thing got universally panned is gonna do, especially 
Knowing that at the very least I know Yuji Naka no longer works at Square Enix, he left and started working for another company. Like, I can only uh, imagine what they're doing now. Like, if they even want to consider doing a reboot, like, I don't even know where they would begin. But, like, that said, I will give it thing to, like, maybe a few years down the line, if it does get that full classic. Like, maybe they could go for something like a TV show style, because I do think that maybe could work. Or because I know Square Enix has a leg in this, they could maybe make a short anime based on it. Just like have an episode based around somebody's dreams or something. I don't know the plot because the plot in this game isn't here. It's in the novel, which I haven't read yet. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe someday. You all want me to read the novel? I'll get it if you really want me to read it. Well, I feel like I've kind of just gotten the gist of it through osmosis as is. At least for now. Maybe there's more to it though. I don't know. I'm talking in circles, so I'm just gonna cut myself off here. I think I've made my points. Like, in a word, like I think my feelings in this game are confused. Like, why was there Enix the company that made this like the RPG company? Like I know Square Enix doesn't exclusively do RPGs, but this was not the studio that should have made this game. Like, I don't think that's a controversial statement by any means. And when I think about it like that, it's like, it's a, honestly amazing that we got anything half as good as we did. Like, it's genuinely shocking if we got anything remotely quality. Here, take my rainbow goblet. It's not like I'm ever going to use them again. <laughs> yes, like, I'm not usually one for review scores, but I will do one for this game, because I, I do think this game kind of needs it, like, if a 5 out of 10 is an average, I think th this is honestly probably, like, ugh. yeah, I'm gonna say it would lane perfectly in that 5, then. Like, because there are so many aspects of this game that are just... Either way too simple for their own good, or just use, but like, the game also never really does anything outright offensive. Like, I'm never, like, super bored aside from, like, when I'm sitting there waiting for the tower attempts to level up, which is more of a completionism thing than anything. But still, like, that is something I had to deal with. Or, the countless times I had to go and grind out the rainbow droplets. Because I wanted the balance suit, which is honestly another issue. Why couldn't we just get multiple rain balance? Like, why can it only be one at a time? Like, I think I mentioned this in passing before, but that must be terrible in co-op mode. Where one player is basically hogging the balance suit while the other's stuck on the ground. Like, if they're lucky, they can use the, the butterflies to go around with the triple jumper. But not every stage is even going to allow for that. I don't know, like, I honestly feel like this game would not be a fun multiplayer experience just because of stuff like that. Like, that's mentioning you're probably, unless they made an adjustment for it, you're probably just making yourself more vulnerable in the multiplayer mode because you're more likely than not still using the, the three suits for three suit slots. Like, there's just so many things that bother me about the game, but. Honestly, in spite of all those, like, I can't hate it. Like, it's not doing anything outright wrong, and it is honestly really fun to just fly around as Balan. Like, I can't refute that one. They just look at levels and find some hidden drop of they put in some crazy, almost out of bounds location. Because they knew you could go around in crazy spots. Like, stuff like that, like, I do notice, or, like, the, the weird amount of detail they put into the tents. Like, it's nothing compared to, like, even the Chow Garden from way back when, but it's still quite a lot of detail. 
and way more than they really needed to, and I kind of respect that. I was like, no, I'm super conflicted on this one. Like, I don't hate it, but it's, it's weird. Anyway, I said I was going to stop talking a few minutes ago because I was talking circles and now I'm talking circles, so now I'm really going to stop. Thank you all for watching. I'll probably do another one of these uh, HRG series at some point within the next year. I assume this video is going to be up after New Year's. I recorded a bunch of these in full, so I, I genuinely don't know when things are going up anymore. But I assume this is up at, after New Year's. In which case, happy 2022, everyone! And if not, that's going to sound really weird and redundant. I have been talking about this game for, for almost as long as I was actually doing the playthrough of it itself for this part, so I am so sorry. I just had a lot to say this time. Usually I summarize my thoughts really quickly, and I just feel like I need to keep talking here. But if that doesn't summarize like how conflicted I feel in this game, I don't know what will. Although I will definitely say one thing I agree with, because I do see a surprisingly large fan base that this game has. This game got done dirty by reviews. Like, it, it did not deserve the lashing it got. Like, I'm not saying it should have gotten high praise and $60 was definitely too much, and I say that as somebody that bought this game at launch for $60. But I guess technically I paid like 56 because I got a discount code for the Steam Edition. But that's still basically full price for the Day 1 Edition. And Square Enix did realize that pretty quick. They started price cutting it hard. Although, like, I already brought this franchise once. Like, Neo The World Ends of the started doing the same thing. And it's another Square Enix game that came out this year that started doing that as well. Like, that game started getting price cut, like, $45 before it even came out. Well, like... I don't know, so Square Enix is a weird company to follow. Anyway, yeah, I've already done my proper outro, so you know what? Take care, stay safe, and have a good one. I'm gonna stare at this grass texture here at the bottom for a while, okay? Okay. Goodbye. <laughs>